Okay, I'd like to welcome you to my talk, OpenWRT Hacking. Um, and first of all, I've, uh, I'd like to start off with uh, this year. I uh, previously on what the heck I did another lecture on OpenWRT um, that focused mainly on the user perspective of the system, um, like how you use it, how you can configure it, install your software, etc. And um, this time, I'd like to pre present uh, the developer's perspective, because I think it's actually more important than user perspective in this case, because uh, OpenWRT mainly started off as a development platform for creating custom firmware for the routers. And first of all, let's have a look at what I'm going to talk about today. Um, first, the obligatory, what is OpenWRT? Um, and sh some short notes on what's new, what has happened in the development process of OpenWRT. And then I'll continue with the main part of my lecture, uh, namely building packages and images with the developer tools that we provide. There are uh, certain, certain tools, the software development kit and the image builder that we uh, provide to make it easier to create packages and images from scratch while maintaining, maintaining compatibility with the official releases. And later I'll go on uh, explaining in depth how you can port, actually port packages to OpenWRT and what the syntax of these make files looks like and so on. And if there's enough time left on the third point, I'm going to talk about the structure of the build route, which is our source code base. Let's start with what OpenWRT is. It is a Linux distribution for embedded wireless routers, and it is designed to run on inexpensive hardware. So uh, it can live with the space and uh, RAM constraints of the average wireless router that you can buy on the market today. And of course, it is free software under the terms of the GNU general public license. And um, let's talk about the, new, uh, the features of the stable version. It is based on Linux 2.4, mainly because of the wireless driver that we uh, got from Broadcom. And it only supports a single platform, the standard Broadcom platform, perhaps the most famous of it is the WRT54G from Linksys. And um, the development version, which we're currently working on, uh, changes the single platform thing. We uh, made it cross-platform and added support for a lot of other machines. Uh, it also includes the new Linux 2.6 kernel for some target platforms. Um, the first additional platform that we added was Texas Instruments AR7, which is used in DSL routers like uh, the WAG 54G from Linksys, the wireless ADSL gateway. And we also added support for embedded x86 um, PC compatible hardware uh, like Circus or Wrap. And uh, another planned thing is uh, the Atheros system on a chip, which is uh, used in some of the more expensive access points with uh, uh, using Atheros wireless cards. And uh, another thing that we've planned is support for the Microtic router board, uh, which are also commonly used in, in some larger wireless setups. So what's new in OpenWRT development? Uh, our version 1.0, codenamed White Russian, um, of course has lots of bug fixes uh, over time. Um, it's not quite there yet, and um, maybe in a few weeks we'll release another release candidate of it. Um, but the main new thing that has happened in the last uh, weeks or month is uh, we finally got a web interface. I guess the pressure was just too hard. Uh, users were requesting it. Uh, it doesn't really make sense to us as users, but uh, quite a lot of people need it. And we currently have 122 source packages in our repository. So uh, it's quite a lot of software, but uh, the new version is going to offer even more. 
And we also added new scripts for handling system events. So uh, with the current code, you can actually, if you have a router that supports USB, just plug in a hard drive and it will get automatically mounted. And you can also install custom handlers for system events like that. Um, and we also improved the performance of the system quite a lot. It, uh, we took off several seconds of, of boot time, uh, mainly due to ch some changes in BusyBox. Okay, the development, the development version of OpenWRT adds some more things uh, in addition to that. First of all, the new platform support, which I already mentioned earlier, and of course also the new kernel. We currently add 2.6.15 and release Candidate 6. And in the development version, there are actually 239 source packages, so uh, a whole new lot of software got added. And um, you can have a lo look at our snapshot builds to figure out what these packages are. There are just too many to name them here. Um, another thing in the development version is that the network strips got rewritten uh, to support more dynamic configuration. Um, a lot of people are using the wireless distribution system, which creates point-to-point -point links um, between access points, and with the new network scripts, you can actually generate real configuration for these kinds of devices with, without using some nasty script tags for that. And another thing that we added are, is new drivers for the switch configuration. Previously, it was uh, very switch dependent to do some custom VLAN configuration, and there were some tools, but uh, all of these are now considered obsolete. Um, because they break once in a while with a new kernel or uh, different Ethernet drivers. So uh, we got around to writing a simple configuration API for the kernel with uh, drivers for the two commonly used switches in the Broadcom platform. This will also be extended to the new platforms like AR7. And another, I, I think, major happening is that we have a working Linux 2.6 port for the Broadcom platform. Um, and we're currently working on integrating the free wireless driver. So uh, the, the Broadcom platform, which previously depended on a binary-only wireless driver, will soon become a truly free platform. OK, now to the main uh, part of my presentation, the developing process. Um, our build system, which we refer to as build root, is based on the UCLibc build root. Now, if I, if I just say build root, uh, you can assume that I'm talking about the OpenWRT build root, uh, which deviated a lot from the UCLibc code base, which we inherited. And uh, it is mainly written in GNU Make. It uh, doesn't use any, any special things for the standard building stuff but we also have some shell and Perl scripts here and there to make things easier. And we also use a configuration system which is based on the kernel uh, config of Linux 2.6, which you're probably already familiar with if you're using Linux. And uh, the main feature of this build system is that it automatically builds toolchain packages and firmware. So you don't need to worry about downloading the single components which make up a whole Linux system. Um, just grab a source code and it will do all these things automatically for you. Um, now to the developer tools that we provide for special cases. The first one is the software development kit. It is generated from the build root at build time if you select it in the menu configuration. And its main purpose is to just compile packages without all the hassle around. Um, it contains a pre-compiled tool chain and all libraries, and it uses build root compatible package directories. So if um, we, have a, we have a standard format for uh, cross-compiled packages, uh, which consists only of uh, build instructions, and the software development kit is actually a stripped down version of the build system, um, which just builds the, the packages and creates some binaries which you can use. Mainly, it's important uh, to uh, preserve uh, or to, to maintain a package across several versions of OpenWRT. 
especially important with the development uh, part because some library changes make it impossible to run newer packages on the older white Russian system. So uh, you can just use the software development kit to backport these packages. Uh, some short notes about using the software development kit. The first step is to just pick your package directory with the build instructions, copy it into the package directory of the software development kit. Um, if, you're, if you add several packages, which you can do, um, and these packages have dependencies on one another, there's a make file which contains some examples on how to add dependencies. And you can just note these dependencies there and the build system will take care of building the packages in the right order. And the last step, of course, is just running make, which will generate the packages for you. Now the second tool that I'm going to talk about is the image builder. The image builder is also generated from the build root, uh, but serves an entirely different purpose. It's, uh, it builds packages from image lists. So if, you, uh, if you're using OpenWT and you're basing your things of the official releases and you just want to add some custom configuration files or, or some packages, then you can just use the image builder, add your special stuff to it, and have it generate a, f a fully working white Russian based or, or kamikaze, which is the development tree uh, based image for uh, containing all your changes. It, uh, in order to build these images, it contains all the packages, the kernel, and the required tools for building the actual firmware images. So only the necessary stuff. Again, some short notes about using the image builder. Um, you can add your custom packages to the packages directory. Um, you will find all the standard packages in this directory, so just put it in there. And uh, if you want to add some extra files, there's also an extra folder for that. This image builder actually uses several package lists which describe what uh, the image should be made of. For example, we have uh, three different standard configuration for the white Russian images. We have, uh, of course, the default image with the standard set of features. Then we have a micro image which contains less packages and uh, will in the future be able to run on devices with only two MB of flash. And the, then the third one is a PPTP package with, uh, with the standard feature set except for PPP over Ethernet support removed and added support for PPTP, which some brain dead ISPs still use. Um, and as usual here, the last step is to just run make and it will build your images. Um, now I'm going to introduce uh, the format of a package directory which describes all these build instructions. Um, the first file, the config.in file, is the menu config uh, description. You can actually leave that out if you're just using the software development kit to compile your package. This is mainly useful for integration into the full build root source. And then there's the main make file containing all those instructions. Uh, was there a question back there? No? Okay. Um, then you have an, an fo a folder containing all the IPKG control files and scripts. Um, as you probably know, IPKG is, is our packaging system, which is similar to DPKG from Debian. And it also uses control files with much of the same structure uh, that describe the package name, version, architecture, and stuff like that. Uh, because you can build several binary packages from one source package, we, have, uh, we actually have a folder there where you can put all these control files. Okay, then there's another directory called patches. Um, if you're cross-compiling software, you will find that most of the time you actually need to change stuff in order for it to work. Most of the time it's the configure script. Autoconf is that way. Um, you can just put your patches to the source uh, package in this patches directory and make sure that, uh, that your patches are to be applied in the alphabetical order 
and the build system will actually, when it downloads your file, your files, uh, extract them and patch them automatically, so you don't.